Hello, divers. Coming to you from Studio D. This is the Deep Dive Microcast, a brief look into things I find interesting, and I hope you do too. I'm Tom Feeney, raconteur, recovering chocoholic, and writer for Wings Chop Movie Magazine. Well, spring has sprung, at least technically speaking. <laughs> And with it comes the Easter holiday, abundant with tradition, both sacred and secular. That, of course, includes the Easter Bunny. In the United States, the Easter Bunny is ingrained in the Easter holiday, appearing in children's stories, cartoons, and yes, commercials. And how did a wascally wabbit become an icon of spring? Keep listening. I'm Harry the Easter Bunny. This here's my latest Easter egg design. Pretty red, huh? Call me at 1-900- I've got some wonderful Easter Bunny stories to tell you. A different one every day. I'll also tell you how to get a whoopee from my special Easter whoopee collection. And part of your $1.85 two-minute call goes to Special Olympics. So get your parents' permission and call me at 1-900- Happy Easter! Harry the Easter Bunny here. Thanks for helping me help Special Olympics. Before we get to the aforementioned holiday hair, there are a plethora of other springtime feasts and festivals celebrating the new life that comes with warmer weather and more temperate climates. For example, in Thailand, you have the Songkran Water Festival, where elephants spray water on people in the streets. And likewise, people spray water on the elephants, like you do. In India... There is the Hindi festival of Holi, where colored powder is thrown all over everyone to reflect the many hues of springtime. In Bosnia, to celebrate the arrival of spring, they honor the very symbol of new life itself with their festival of scrambled eggs. Now that, as you might expect, involves feeding the local participants scrambled eggs and Lots of them, like 10,000 of them cooked in a giant pan. I do wonder, though, if they have any ketchup. Mm. Well, and of course, if we are talking about springtime celebrations, you just can't pass over, you know. Among the most revered Jewish festivals, Passover honors the saga of the Israelites' liberation from bondage in Egypt. The traditional Seder plate, highlights symbolic foods integral to this narrative. The week-long observance consistently aligns with the arrival of spring in accordance with the biblical decree, guard the month of spring and make then the Passover offering. And yes, we have Easter, a Christian holiday celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the third day following his crucifixion. Now, the earliest recorded observance of an Easter celebration comes from the second century. Now, the origin of the word Easter is not certain, but may come from the old German word Eustarum, which ultimately became Easter. Now, other theories abound, but no conclusive evidence exists for any particular one. Now, just as... Over time, the Christian holiday of Christmas has been sort of co-opted by a more secular, a.k.a. commercialized, version. Easter has followed a much similar pattern. Even so, many of our current Easter trappings do have their roots in the Christian faith, even the painting of Easter eggs. Now, the practice of decorating Easter eggs can be traced back to the 13th century. During Holy Week, The church forbade the consumption of eggs, and yet 
Those pesky chickens didn't get the memo and persisted in laying them. Now, to distinguish these eggs as Holy Week eggs, they were adorned with decorations. Over time, the egg itself became a potent symbol of the resurrection, mirroring the emergence of new life from its shell, much like Jesus rising from the tomb. Now, the all-popular Easter egg hunt can be traced all the way back to the 15th century, and more specifically to Martin Luther. Yes, that Martin Luther, the Protestant reformer. He encouraged the activity of hiding eggs and having children go looking for them. Now, apparently, hunting for eggs was a common practice for centuries. Youngsters would be sent out into the fields to look for eggs from wild fowl to bring home for breakfast. Who knew? And that, friends, brings us to the rabbit of the hour. The legendary Lepus. The Easter Bunny. So, why did this cute little cottontail become such an iconic symbol of Easter? Well, first of all, it ties into the whole theme of spring. New life, new beginnings, and fertility. If you know anything about the species, you know that they love to breed. Like, like tribbles. And springtime is when their mm, amorous activities are at their most frenzied. But when did the actual Easter Bunny first poke his twitchy little nose into the world carrying his Easter basket filled with brightly dyed eggs and candy? Well, one of the earliest references to a rabbit delivering eggs can be found in German folklore. The tradition of the Osterhass, or Easter hare, dates back to the 16th century. Now, according to legend, children would make nests out of hats or baskets for the Osterhaus to lay colorful eggs in. Why they believed a bunny could lay eggs is, um, questionable. Apparently, according to lore, a goddess transformed a bird into a rabbit, and on Easter, the rabbit gains the ability to lay eggs. On that day. Yeah. The concept of the Easter Bunny was brought to America by German immigrants in the 1700s. And as the tradition spread, it merged with other customs and evolved into the familiar figure we know today. But let's be clear about one thing. The Easter Bunny's name is not Peter Rabbit or Peter Cottontail. Those are entirely different characters. Yes, the painting of eggs delivered by an anthropomorphic rabbit, which is itself a symbol of fertility and new life, which ties into the story of the resurrection, might seem all a bit convoluted. But if there's one thing human beings do best, it's cherry-picking the beliefs, the traditions, and the history that we like the best and leaving the rest in our collective cultural dustbin. Just something to ponder as you bite the head off a cheap chocolate hollow Easter bunny avatar. Happy Easter. Thanks for listening. If this is the first time you've heard this podcast, check out our past episodes available on almost all podcast providers and subscribe so you don't miss a single one. And if you like what you hear, write a review. We would love to know what you think. Or drop us a line at the deep dive podcast at gmail.com or on our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter slash X feeds. You can find links to those and our awesome t shirt store in the bio of our Instagram page. All clips used in this podcast are meant for educational purposes only and not to infringe on existing copyrights. The Deep Dive Microcast is part of the Deep Dive Podcast family and a production of Automaton Studios. Joyous bunnies, first stop. Here's the Easter red bear. Hooray!
Oh, the happy Easter rabbit. Here, kid. Have an egg. I want an Easter egg. I want an Easter egg. I want an Easter egg. I want a boy.